Hello everybody and welcome back to Southern Fried Crime, the true crime channel with the country twist. If you're new here, please like, subscribe, and click on the little bell icon to be notified when new videos post. New videos post on Monday and I know that I haven't been good about posting videos but I've had to deal with some work issues and those are all straightened out now so I'm going to start back to posting my videos hopefully once a week that is the goal in today's case we're going to be talking about a lesser known serial killer named Darren Dion Van and I think it's important to talk about these lesser known cases to bring attention to and remembrance to the victims and although the ladies that I'm going to talk about are sex workers they did not deserve what happened to them, and they deserve to be remembered, just like anybody else. Seven women, Africa Hardy, Aneth Jones, Tierra Bradley, Christine Williams, Tracy Martin, Sonia Billingsley, and Tanya Gatlin, all had the misfortune of meeting the same man, Darren Dion Van. On the surface, Darren Van had it all. Good looks, a beautiful wife, a job, and more. But underneath it all, he secretly hated women, especially prostitutes. Eventually, all their paths would cross, and only Darren Van would come out alive to tell the story of what happened. There is not much known about Darren Van or his background. Van was born in Gary, Indiana, on March the 21st, 1971. The name of his parents, or if he had any siblings, is unknown. He moved to Cherry Hill, North Carolina in the early 1990s. He joined the Marines in 1991 when he was 20 years old. Not long after he joined the Marines, he received an other than honorable discharge. I have researched many sources, but was unable to find out exactly why he received such a discharge. While in Cherry Hill, he married a woman named Maria, who was 30 years his senior. Maria's son, who was Van's stepson, was literally a Van. He said Van was very standoffish and would often talk to himself. When Darren Van lost his job at a temp agency, he and Maria moved back to Gary, Indiana. Soon after moving back to Gary, Van began to see an unnamed woman. In 2004, he held his girlfriend hostage with gasoline and a lighter. He was charged with a Class D felony and was sentenced to spend 90 days in jail. Maria filed for a divorce in 2009 and the marriage was dissolved in 2011. Darren Van ended up in Texas. He began to commit many small and petty crimes. Eventually, he was arrested on September the 28th 2009 in Travis County, Texas, for a sexual assault he had committed in Austin in 2007. He received a five-year prison sentence and was released on July the 5th, 2013. After he was released from prison, he had to register as a sex offender. Van was considered a low-level risk to reoffend, so he was able to fly under the radar. Immediately after getting out of prison, Van began to hook up with women via Backpage.com. Now, I'm not sure exactly what Backpage is, but from what I can gather, it was a place where people could find other people to hook up with. I tried to go on the website myself, but it has been seized by the FBI, so I was unable to see exactly what Backpage.com was all about. On October the 17th, 2014, an unnamed woman arranged for 19-year-old Africa Hardy to hook up with Darren Dion Van. They were to meet at a Motel 6 in Hammond, Indiana. The woman who arranged the meeting with Hardy and Van began to text Hardy after a little while. She thought the responses from Hardy didn't sound like the text that she, Hardy would send, and so the lady and a male friend went to the Motel 6 and found Africa dead in the bathtub. Police used phone records and saw that Darren Van was the last person who had contact with Africa. When Van was located, he was found to have Africa's cell phone in his possession. He was arrested for her murder. 
and at the time he was arrested, Ban confessed to the murder of Africa and seven other women. Africa was a sweet young woman. She grew up singing VeggieTales songs and had dreams of recording her own music. Africa had a warm smile and was a creative young woman who wrote poetry and sung R&B songs. She also liked to sing gospel in church on Sundays in her church. She was a compassionate person who had a contagious laugh. Lori Townsend, the mother of Africa, stated it best. She would just like to be remembered as Africa. She didn't think of herself as anything spectacular. She was kind, considerate, compassionate. She was loving. She was a friend. I don't want her voice to be silenced. It's not just her. It's all those other women she helped. I do see Africa as a tragic hero in the story of Darren Van. If it were not for the death of Africa, the other women might not have been found. Also, Darren Van might not have been caught and would have gone on to kill other women. Aneth Jones was last seen alive on October the 8th, 2014. She was reported missing two days later. Ben told detectives he was offered $300 in cash and $200 in drugs by a friend of a friend to kill Jones because of an upcoming legal matter. Van and the friend planned the murder, with Van pretending to be a person soliciting Jones for sex. Van said he had sex with Jones and then strangled her to death for about five minutes using a thin cord or a rope. He then moved her body to a wooded area in Gary before moving her to the abandoned home in Gary where she was found. Tierra Bates was 28 years old when she crossed paths with Van. She was living and last seen in Gary, Indiana. She left to meet a friend on January the 13th, 2014, but she never returned. Van led police to her body in an abandoned house in Gary, Indiana. Christine Williams was a 36-year-old woman and mother of four when she came across Darren Van. She was also found strangled in an abandoned house in Gary, Indiana. Christine Williams was a 36-year-old woman and mother of four when she came across Darren Van. She was also found strangled in an abandoned house in Gary, Indiana. The final two victims, Sonia Billingsley, aged 53, who helped to take care of her mother, and Tanya Gatlin, aged 27, were found dead in an abandoned house in Gary, Indiana. After his arrest, police investigated missing and murdered women around the area. It was found that Van could have murdered as many as 18 other women. On May 4, 2018, Van pleaded guilty to seven murders in exchange for seven concurrent life sentences. While, while in prison, Darren Van has been charged with several counts of battery against correctional officers for throwing feces and urine on guards. That's all for today's case. Please remember to like, subscribe, and click on the little bell icon to be notified when new videos post. That's it for now. Bye.